Hey, what's up, YouTube? So today I'm going to be showing you how to repurpose one of these Bionex electric bike hub motors. This one is a 350 watt model. They also came in a 250 watt. This isn't the current generation, but it's still a fairly new one. So you're going to find a lot of these uh, cheap prices on Craigslist, at, even at recycling yards and landfills. And hopefully we can, with this video, we can help keep these out of landfills because a lot of the time there's nothing wrong with them. Um, so what Bionex did, which was, you know, arguably a good business decision, but a terrible decision for the planet and for people's pocketbooks, is they put these proprietary motor controllers on the inside. So you can only use this motor with their battery pack and their other tech that they put on their bikes, which they usually charge quite a premium for, in my opinion, compared to other electric bike companies. Now you're locked into the parts that they can use. And so what happens is, is when someone buys the whole kit, they buy the battery, they buy everything, it's got a pretty hefty price tag. And then eventually down the road, the battery fails or the BMS fails or, or something fails and they need to replace their battery. And when they look at the prices that they're charging for a single battery, they just go, oh, well, um, I guess I'm just gonna have to sell this motor at a loss or get rid of it because this motor will only work with their battery. Now what we're gonna do in this video is draw wires out from the internal wires of the motor and completely cut out the circuitry on the inside and add an external motor controller. And you can use any kind of controller that you want for a brushless motor. This is a brushless motor. A, a brushed controller will not work with it. And so let's begin here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna open it up and you're gonna need one tool uh, that might be kind of expensive, might not be. Um, my dad just had one of these laying around. I, I have a feeling they're a little bit of money. Uh, this is a gear puller and it can be used to pull um, bearings, help pull bearings out of cars, I believe. And, uh, and I have a wrench that fits on the top here too. And so what you're gonna wanna do is uh, take this black piece here and you stick it in the axle right there. When it's all together, the whole thing will be squished together. These two plates here, this one and this one will be completely compressed right right there and um, what you're gonna do is stick the black piece into the axle and then these hooks these three hooks you want to put them around around this edge here and the, what the idea is when you turn this wrench it's gonna push this black piece down and it's gonna pop this cap off and uh, just make sure you don't have any nuts there because you will crack the outside of your casing, like, like I did here, that I've repaired with JB Weld, and that's held up pretty good. I put about a thousand kilometers on it with um, with that repair. So uh, if you do crack your case, it's not the end of the world, but if you don't have a nut on there, you're not going to crack it anyway, so no worries. So um, so once you've soldered up all your wires, and you've taken, after you took the controller out, um, you're going to run your wires up as close to the axle as you can here. And then you're going to run, feed the wires through the hole, and then you're going to put this back on. And you can use the um, the gear pullers to squeeze it back all together. And then when you do that, you're going to want to take some sort of piece of waterproofing tape and seal up this area. I've got some residue from it still there, but you're going to want to seal the area between the two plates because if you don't have that and it rains, you're going to get water in your motor. And another thing is that if you're using this motor and all of a sudden one day it locks up and uh, you can't ride it anymore, there might not be anything wrong with these windings at all. What could be wrong is something's failed on this board and more than likely it's going to be one of these MOSFETs here, which are common to fail from what I read in forums. And so you can try to source down one of these boards and so you can use it with your system on, on your buy next system just plug and play, put a new board in, solder it in. You can find them on eBay, but it's not worth the money in my opinion. Um, it seems like the better bet to just um, bypass their system on entirely and just get an external controller because you can get more power that way too. This is a 350 watt motor on the sticker, but with my setup, I can pump almost 2000 watts through this and it can handle it, it can handle it, which is awesome. You know, I've traveled quite far distances um, on that setup. So yeah, these motors, if you can find them and you're willing to spend the time and you have a gear puller, it's very much worth it working on them. 
there was a shop nearby, I, you know, I ended up not getting them, but they were selling four of these motors for like 150 bucks, which is really good. You can't even get the Chinese ones for, you know, around 150 each alone. So, um, you know, it is going to be some trouble. You're going to have to despoke this from the, from the wheel and remove all the spokes before you can take this motor off, but, but it's not that big a deal. And, uh, yeah, and this, the motor, when I got it from the Recycling Depot, it had the wrong threads on it, so I ended up stripping my threads. Sorry, it didn't have the wrong threads, it had the wrong nut, and I ended up stripping my threads, so I had to braise it square to fit in the dropout so it wouldn't spin. But, um, yeah, I just wanted to send this video to you guys, and hopefully that this can keep some of these motors from getting thrown out, because when your stuff goes to the Recycling Depot, it's not all getting recycled, you know? It's a lot of work for someone to go and unwind all the copper and then take the lamination off the copper or burn it off and, and then take all the parts. I mean, this is a relatively straightforward thing to recycle and it's probably not even getting recycled that well. It's, it's, a lot of it's getting shipped to China and we gotta take control of the stuff we're repairing and start repairing stuff locally a lot more um, and recycling stuff a lot more locally.